I'm Amber Rodriguez, and today we're going to explain how the International Churches of Christ are structured. Who runs it? How are things done? Where can I find the answers? We're going to answer all of these questions today. So let's dive in. The International Churches of Christ is a fellowship of 731 churches with a membership of 114,000 in 147 countries. These churches range in size from a couple dozen to over a thousand. These 731 churches are organized into families and we have 34 families of churches. For example, there's the Indian family of churches and the French speaking West Africa family of churches. So again, there are 34 families of churches that make up the International Churches of Christ. Each of these families needs to be organized. So from among the leadership of individual churches in each family of churches, regional family chairpersons have been chosen. These roles carry with them representative responsibilities, and in some cases, they also serve as a lead couple for the families of churches. With the agreement of their local congregations to donate their time to help with the responsibilities of their particular family of churches, both on a local and global level. They aim to build and maintain unity among churches globally, represent their region in all discussions, and some even coordinate various task forces and service teams. More on that later. Now, how is each family of churches represented in decision-making and meetings? Well, aside from the chair couples, each family of churches selects commended disciples to serve as delegates. These representatives attend global meetings for ICOC leadership create proposals for change, for action to build unity, and to increase mission effectiveness. They also promote global and local unity and work with the service teams. Each region is granted a minimum representation of one man, one woman, and one next-gen delegate. Additional delegates are added based on the size of the regional family of churches. It is exciting to see this increased diversity among the delegates. So what are the service teams? With the unity of the churches in mind, service teams address the needs of disciples and churches in their specific service area. The chairpersons of these service teams are selected and nominated by the service teams and confirmed or rejected by a delegate vote. Elders, teachers, women, campus, singles, youth and family, communication, administration. Each member of the service teams and task forces must be a spiritual leader that is commended by his or her local leadership. And last but not least, we have the Catalyst team. And as the name implies, does not have executive power for decision making, but instead catalyzes the decision making process necessary for global planning, involvement and cooperation. The Catalyst team includes a diverse membership, including two elders, one teacher, two women's ministers, and regional family chairmen. Some exciting stuff has happened from this organization. The Catalyst team has hosted meetings and worked for unity around the world. Last year, the Catalyst team asked all the families of churches to pray about goals for their churches and share these goals with the other regional family chairpersons. All of the service teams have hosted conferences, many into the thousands. A lot of important work gets done behind the scenes. So let's review. We have 731 churches organized into 34 families of churches by region. Each of these families has a chair couple to organize and facilitate as they work to meet global and local needs. Each family of churches also has delegates that are involved in leadership meetings, decision-making, and creating proposals to better and further the church in unity and missions, guided and aided by the Catalyst team. The various service teams and task forces exist to serve specific needs of the churches and disciples. Each culture and country can organize how they see fit. Different regions are organized differently. We have set this structure in place and we like it, but we acknowledge that it's not perfect. This is a work in progress and we have much to learn about how best to maintain the precious worldwide unity of our movement 
as we labor to strengthen and grow our local churches against the backdrop of an ever-changing and always challenging global environment. Please pray for our ICOC organization that God will help us to adjust and adapt to finding the best possible solutions. You can read all about our leadership at icocleaders.org. The leadership strives for transparency and many meetings and decisions are documented. The current list of ICOC delegates can also be found there. We hope you found this video helpful. And if you have any questions or concerns, icocleaders.org is a great place to start. God bless.